In this video I want to talk about the differences between trunk ports and access ports. Trunk port and access port is something that you can uh, configure on a switch at home or in your company network as long as it's a managed switch. A managed switch means simply a switch that lets you change its configuration. And in previous video we talked about VLANs and VLAN tags, also known as 802.1Q tags, and we know that we can configure VLANs on the switch to divide your local area network, your LAN, into smaller virtual local area networks, or VLANs. And uh, we know our devices, by default, are in the same VLAN, VLAN 1, also called a default VLAN. And if you have non-managed switch at home, that means you are also in that default VLAN. If all these hosts are in the same VLAN, then all those devices, in this case we've got some PCs, we've got some laptops, and here PCs again, all those devices should be able to talk to each other. As you can see, I configured them with the IP addresses and also set MAC addresses for them. PC1 has IP address of 10.0.0.1, PC2 has 10.0.0.2, etc. So we can send, for example, ping from this device. I will go to desktop, to command prompt, and I should be able to ping, what, maybe 10.0.0.6, which is PC number 6 here down. I press enter, and we can see it's up and running. The ping is working as expected. And if we go to switch configuration, if I run show VLAN command, for example, I can see that indeed all the ports on this switch, and this, this switch has 24 ports altogether, all those ports belong to VLAN 1, which is default VLAN. And uh, by the way, on Cisco devices you will also see that crap. It's not used to, for the last 30 years, but it's kept just for backwards uh, compatibility. But basically all the ports always belong to VLAN 1 if you don't change anything. And if we run, for example, show MAC address table, we can see MAC addresses of those PCs that connect to this switch, but uh, because we only could see the traffic between PC2 and PC6, switch uh, currently only knows about those two computers, and they have MAC addresses BBB and FFF respectively. Because we remember, switch in the middle does not know what IP address is. The switch in the middle will use the MAC addresses to, for to forward the traffic. So from switch perspective, the traffic goes from MAC address BBB to FFF. That's exactly what we can see here. And then, if we run command, for example, show interface FA02 switch port, which is the port that PC2 connects to, we can see FA02 and MAC address BBB, that means PC2 connects to port FA2 on the switch, we can see that the port mode is called access. It's static access, exactly. So it's operational mode, static access. But what that mode access actually means? The mode access on the port on the switch is designed to connect devices, I mean hosts like PCs or servers or whatever, that have no idea what a VLAN tag is. Or maybe devices that are simply not configured or ready to receive a frame with a VLAN tag. Because currently VLAN tags are not in use in our case. All devices connect to default VLAN, and the default VLAN doesn't use any VLAN tags, 802.1Q tags. But there is yet another mo mode for a port, and it's called trunk port. And that mode trunk is a mode where you connect any port on that switch to another device that simply can understand VLAN tags another device that can receive VLAN tags and it knows what to do with them. And in current setup, to be honest, if we change the mode from access to trunk, this will not change much, because we currently simply don't use any VLAN tags. From the previous video, we remember that to use VLAN tags, we have to first configure the VLANs. So let's put laptop 3 and laptop 4 in separate VLAN, let's say VLAN 10. To do that, I run command first enable, EN, but I'm already in that mode. I run configure terminal, which is conf t in short, and then I have to connect to port 3 and 4, because laptop 3 is connected to port 3, and laptop 4 is connected to port 4 on the switch. So I say interface FA03 for laptop 3, and I say switch port mode access, just to make sure it's in this access mode, and then I say switch port access VLAN 10. I put this laptop in VLAN 10. 
And because that VLAN didn't exist, this switch will create that VLAN automatically for me. We can see the orange circle, that means the port restarts, reconfigures itself, and then we do the same for port FA04. I just use up arrow because I'm lazy. So I say again, switch port mode access to make sure we are dealing with access port because only access port can be put in one specific VLAN. And I say switch port access VLAN 10. And now let's configure PC5 and PC6. Let's put them in VLAN 20, maybe. So I say FA05 for PC5. I say switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 20 this time. Again, that VLAN didn't exist, so switch created one for me. And I say FA06 is the port on the switch where PC6 connects to. And I do again mode access, access VLAN 20. That's it. Now I can exit the configuration mode. And if I run show VLAN now, I will see that indeed VLAN 1 still exists and PC1 and PC2 still belong to that VLAN because I didn't change anything on those first two ports. I only changed port FA03, FA04. I put them in VLAN 10 and then I configured port FA05 and 6 and I put them in VLAN 20. We can see VLAN ID 20. So from now on, as we can Remember, we don't change anything on the PCs. They are not even aware they are put in, in any VLANs, yes? Note that we only changed the switch configuration. All of those ports are still access ports. They are not trunk ports, they are still access ports. However, we've got three different VLANs now. FA01 and 02 are in default VLAN, FA3 and 4 are in VLAN 10, and FA5 and 6 are in VLAN 20, but they are all still access port. And what it means now, from let's say laptop 3, if I run command prompt, from now on I only will be able to ping laptop 4. I can only reach the devices that are, that are in the same VLAN on the switch. So if I ping let's say 10.0.0.4, that will work. Laptop 4 is in the same VLAN, VLAN 10, but if I ping let's say 006, that will not work. Why? Because 10.0.0.6 PC6 is in different VLAN. We can see the request timed out. And if we go to the switch, if we run show MAC address table, the only traffic that switch could see now is between FA03 and 04. When we run the ping from laptop 3 to laptop 4, that was traffic within VLAN 10. And if we quickly ping from PC6, let's say ping 10.0.0.5, we can see that works. And also from PC2, if we ping 001, if we ping PC1, we sh also should be able, because they are both in default VLANs. But what I mean, if we go now to switch and we rerun re that command, show MAC address table, now we can see all the devices, but we can also see how they are spread between those VLANs. VLAN 1, 10, 20. Hope that makes sense. So what's that trunk port then? <laughs> what is it? How, how do we use it? Let's say maybe that one switch is not enough for me. Maybe I've got a big company, maybe I've got three floors and I want to have multiple switches. Maybe I want to, one, to have one switch on each of those floors in my company. So I have to create kind of a connection between those switches. Let me add one. I say switch. I will choose this one. I want to add another switch and I will need some more devices, maybe some more PCs on that, let's say, second floor. And I want this particular PC, for example, PC7, maybe I want it to be in VLAN 20. Maybe I want it to be able to communicate with PC5 and PC6. So how do I do that? The answer is, I can simply connect those two switches. Let's say port 07. I will connect it to also port FA07 on, the, on this switch, but I will configure that, that connection as a switch port mode trunk. So I go to switch configuration, first this one, I can see FA07 is now up, so I can run conf t, interface FA07, and I say switch port mode trunk this time. And that's it. I simply go to this switch, switch one on the second floor or whatever it was. I go to CLI and I say again, enable first conf t. Oh, <laughs> we will waste some time because switch thinks that's the domain name. Let me maybe prevent that from happening. I will say no IP domain lookup in, sorry, in conf t, of course, no IP domain lookup. We can ignore that. All right, but never mind. What I need is interface FA07 
and I want it to be switch port mode trunk. That's it. But let me explain what we are trying to achieve here first. How our traffic currently looks like. When I send a ping from PC1 to PC2, that ping will have some data. In our case, it will be simply a ping. It will have source IP address of 10.0.0.1. It will have destination IP of 10.0.0.2. That's what PC1 is building. This is called packet when you have that information. And then it will add MAC addresses because it can see it's connected to switch and switch doesn't know what are the IP addresses. So PC1 understands that it will have to add source and destination MAC address. So it adds AAAA as a source MAC address and BBBB as destination MAC address. And only then forward, forwards that frame to the switch. And switch can see that and it will forward this information further to all devices that are in default VLAN. Default VLAN means no VLAN tag is attached to this frame. And it forwards it as it is to BBBB. However, if we send the same ping from PC6 to PC5, this time the data is still our ping. The source, the source IP is 10.0.0.6. The destination IP is 10.0.0.5. The source MAC is FFFF. Destination MAC is EEEE. And such frame goes to the switch. However, when switch receives that frame on port FA06, the switch can see that this port is configured with VLAN tag 20. That means the switch will attach additional information called 802.1Q tag and will put the VLAN identifier there in that field. It will say VLAN 20. This traffic belongs to VLAN 20. So it can only forward that frame to any other device that is within that VLAN. And only one other device is in this VLAN. It's PC5. So the switch forwards it to port number 5. But then, on the way out, it will strip off that information, that VLAN information. So p when PC5 receives that frame, it doesn't even realize it's in a VLAN, you know. From, switch pers from a PC perspective, it doesn't belong to any VLANs. Because all of that happens internally within the switch. However, what if we want to place this PC7 also in VLAN 20? We can use that trunk port, because the trunk port is the port that does not strip off any VLAN tag information. So basically, the default VLAN, VLAN 1, can travel via this trunk port. The VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 can also travel further using this trunk port, because the behavior switch uh, changes now. Trunk port is simply a port where the switch will forward the frame as it is, with the VLAN tag information. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to that PC, and I configure it with IP address, let's say 10.0.0.7, and I can assign MAC ABCD, maybe. Let's connect it. To port FA01. Maybe let's move it a little bit. If I go to this switch configuration and uh, the PC is connected to interface FA01 on this switch, I can say switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN, and then whatever VLAN I want, maybe 20. I will put it in VLAN 20. That means from now on, this PC7 is able to communicate with PC5 and 6. Let's check. I say, so let me exit that. Let's go to the PC, command prompt. I say ping 10.0.0.6. And we can see it works fine because PC7 sends the traffic from 10.0.0.7 to IP 10.0.0.6 with its own MAC address. And the destination MAC address is this, FFFF. But when switch one receives that frame, it can see this switch port is configured with VLAN tag 20. It will add that VLAN tag and it will send it out every single port that belongs to VLAN 20. But in this case, there are no hosts in VLAN 20, but there is a trunk port and trunk port belongs to all VLANs. So it forwards the tr this traffic out of this trunk port. And when this switch receives that traffic, 
it will forward it further, but only to devices that are in VLAN 20, but at the same time, because it knows MAC address FFFF is connected to port FA06 and its switch port mode access, it will strip off this VLAN information again and it will send this frame to PC6 as if it was in no VLAN at all. But note that this PC7 cannot talk to, let's say, PC1. If I ping 10.0.0.1, I am not able to reach it. To reach VLAN 1, I have to be also in default VLAN, in VLAN 1. So if I wanted to place this PC in default VLAN, then I would do conf t interface FA01, switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 1. We can see the port reconfigures on the switch, and if I go to the PC, when it turns green, as it is now, I, I should be able to ping, let's say, 10.0.0.1, and I can. But if I try 06, that worked just a minute ago, so let me run up arrow, now I'm not able to reach VLAN 20, because this switch port, FA01 on switch 1, does not belong to VLAN 20 anymore, it's default VLAN, and default VLAN means there is no VLAN tag added at any point of this path, because default VLAN is the one that does not add any 802.1Q tags. So basically, the main difference is that access port will keep stripping off that VLAN information, that .1Q tag, while trunk will forward it as it is, with VLAN identifier. So all VLANs can travel via that one single cable here. But uh, bear in mind, there is one thing wrong here right now, because we've got three VLANs, and VLAN is a layer 2 concept, but they are all in the same subnet, and subnet is a layer 3 concept. And we talked about layer 2 and layer 3 uh, in the video about OSI model, so you might want to revisit that one, because basically you want to really match layer 2 and layer 3 information. We shouldn't have them all in the same subnet. For example, if you have these in subnet 10.0.0.0 slash 24, then, this lap then these laptops should really be in different subnet as well. If they are in VLAN 10, Maybe we will create another subnet for them, 10.0.10.0, let's say. And because these PCs at the bottom are in VLAN 20, at layer 2, maybe we want to create a layer 3 subnet, let's say 10.0.20.0 slash 24. So layer 2 and layer 3 are two different concepts, two different layers, and that's something to consider, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of also unrelated to access port and trunk port. If you want to learn more about computer networking stuff, then remember to join our Automation Avenue learning platform. And it's not only about uh, computer networking, I mean. Maybe you want to learn about AWS Cloud, or Python programming, or Linux, or Proxmox, home server related stuff. On Automation Avenue platform you will find hours and hours of very useful materials regarding each of those subjects. And it's also free to try, so there are no excuses, really. I will see you there, I hope. So yes, I hope that all makes sense. And uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.